This is a very short review session for the cross holdings problems on quiz two. Now these are the problems that usually give people the most trouble on the old quizzes. So I thought I'd take a selection of these problems so you can see the different ways in which the problem can be presented. So let's take an easy example. This is an example where you're given the information of a publicly traded company that owns 60% of another company. And the key is when you see the word numbers 50, 60, 70%, that usually means you have a majority holding of a company. And accounting around the world requires that you consolidate your financials. In this particular problem, you're told that they're both stable growth companies growing 2% a year in perpetuity. You're given the same cost of capital for both, and then you're given the key numbers for both companies. When you're given information for a company with cross holdings, the key words you're looking for are what kinds of financials I give you. In this particular case, I've given you the consolidated financials for Juno, which is the parent company, and Vellum, which is the subsidiary, the stand, and you're given the standalone for the subsidiary. So you're given the operating income, the book value of equity, the debt, and the cash. And the problem basically says, if you have 100 million shares outstanding in Juno, what would the value per share be? Now I'm going to take you through two different ways in which you can solve this problem. And you don't have to know both, but if you can be comfortable with both, you can actually double check your answer when you do a cross holdings problem. Here's the first one. You value the consolidated company. So in this case, here's what I do. I take the consolidated company, in this case Juno, and I compute the return on capital and the reinvestment rate, and I do a traditional valuation of the operating assets, and I come up with the value of the operating assets. I add cash, I subtract our debt, I get a value for equity in the consolidated company. Then I value the subsidiary as a separate company. I get a value of equity in the subsidiary company. Remember though, that when I valued the consolidated company, I valued 100% of the subsidiary as part of my valuation. But I own only 60%. So to clean up for that, here's what I do. I get the value of equity that I got for my consolidated company and I subtract out 40% of the value of the subsidiary. I'm subtracting out my est estimated intrinsic value of the 40% that doesn't belong to me. So let's recap. When you value a consolidated company, you're valuing 100% of the subsidiary. And because you don't own 100%, you have to subtract out the 40% that doesn't belong to you. So if you're given the consolidated financials and you're given the subsidiary numbers, one way to do this is to value the consolidated and subtract out 40% of the subsidiary. You're saying, what other way could you do it? You could actually strip out from the numbers I gave you the numbers for the parent company as a standalone company. So what I've done here is I've taken the consolidated numbers, subtracted out the subsidiary numbers, I get the numbers for just the parent. I can value the parent and the subsidiary as standalone companies. So you see my valuations, I have the parent company valuation, the subsidiary valuation, but here to get the value of equity in Juno, here's what I do. I take the value that I get for the parent, but remember now I haven't valued any of the subsidiary. So I add to it 60% of the value of the subsidiary to get a value of equity in Juno. I divide by the number of shares, I get exactly the same value per share. So let's recap. When you have numbers for a consolidated and the subsidiary, you can value the consolidated and subtract out the portion of the subsidiary that doesn't belong to you to get to the value of equity. Alternatively, you can value the two companies as standalone companies, in which case you take the value of the parent company and then you add the 60% of the subsidiary that belongs. I know it sounds incredibly confusing, but take a look at the solutions, work it through because it's easy to get confused about what you're doing. And in many problems, you don't have a choice. The problem itself will tell you whether you're given the parent or the, con you don't have a choice of doing what we did here. But if you do have a choice, you can use either approach and you should get the same answer. Let's take a second problem where you really didn't have much of a choice. So this is a chemical company that owns 70% of Adler Steel. So a chemical company owns a steel company. The 70% again is the trigger. That means you've consolidated things. I told, tell you that with the consolidated financials, you compute a value of the free cash flows of 1.5 billion. So you value the consolidated company, which means you valued 100% of Adler Steel when you come up with the value. Then I tell you that I can't give you the information to value Adler Steel as a standalone. So you can't do what you did in the previous problem. But I tell you, typically steel companies trade at 1.6 times book value. And I tell you what the minority interest Gerlach shows on its balance sheet. And I know this is messy and you have to remember your accounting, but the minority interest that Gerlach shows on its balance sheet is 
the book value of the 30% that doesn't belong to Gerlach. Let me repeat that. What you see as minority interest is the 30% of the book value of the subsidiary that doesn't belong to you. So here's what I need to do to get a value of the parent company. I start with the value of the operating assets, the 1.5 billion. I add to that the cash, I subtract out the debt, and then I subtract out my estimated market value for the minority interest. How do I get that? I start with the 150 million, which is the book value of the 30% that doesn't belong to me. And I apply that price to book ratio, 1.6, to come up with an estimated value. I'm doing exactly what I did in the first solution to the last problem, but here, instead of valuing the subsidiary, I'm cheating. I'm cheating because I don't have the information. I take the minority interest as my starting point and I apply 1.6 to it because of the price to book ratio to come up. So here again, I'm taking the consolidated company, subtracting out the value of the minority interest, but I'm cheating because I'm not estimating the intrinsic value of the 30% because I don't have the information. I'm using the price to book ratio as a shortcut to estimate what it is. So in this problem, consolidated, I'm netting out the subsidiary, get to value of equity. Let's do a third problem. You're given information on, a, again, a, a parent company, Simca, with a 75% holding. Again, key is you've got more than 50%. It's going to be consolidated in a restaurant chain. I now, in this problem, I'm very specific about what I give you. I tell you I'm giving you the parent company financials, not the consolidated. And I've given you the financials for the subsidiary. Tell me what the value of equity per share in Simca is. So in this particular case, remember, I've given you just the parent company. If you have just the parent company, then you haven't counted any of your subsidiaries. So what I'm doing here is I'm valuing the parent company as a standalone company. I'm valuing the subsidiary as a standalone subsidiary. And now I'm taking my parent company value and adding to it 75% of the value of the subsidiary. Again, why 75%? Because when you value just the parent company, you haven't counted any of the subsidiary. So if you view the first three prompts in conjunction, you'll see that the way I'm approaching things, I'm trying to be logical to make sure I'm not double counting or missing counting something. So here I'm adding the value of the subsidiary. Let's do one final prompt. You've been asked to value a company which has both a majority and a minority holding, a 10% holding in a Haversack and a 75% holding in Samsa. You've completed the intrinsic valuations of all three companies and they're summarized below. So here again, notice I've been, I'm being very specific about what I give you about the holding company. I've told you that in this case, I've given you the consolidated numbers for Veritas and I've given you the values for the two subsidiaries. There are 100 million shares outstanding in each of the three companies. Estimate the value per share for Veritas. I'm going to let you think about this for a moment. I've given you the value of the consolidated. I've given you the value of the two subsidiaries. You need to get the value of equity. You need to decide what you're going to add, what you're going to subtract, and what you're going to ignore. Let's start with the easy one. The 10% holding in a Haversack. Have you counted that yet? Remember, if it's a 10% holding, it's not part of your operating income and your cash flows. It hasn't been counted, so I'm going to add the value of that 10%. Okay? So you're going to see me add the value of the 10%. Remember that I gave you consolidated, which means I counted 100% of Samson, and since you own only 75%, I have to subtract out the 25% of Samson that doesn't belong to you. Therefore, I add the minority holding because I haven't counted it yet. I've subtracted out the value of the subsidiary that doesn't belong to me, the 25%. I get a value per share. I know it sounds incredibly confusing. You're saying, how the heck am I going to remember what to add, what to subtract, and what to ignore? My suggestion is look at what you've already valued. Ask yourself, have I valued the other pieces? And if the answer is yes, you don't have to count them. But if you have not, you've got to count them. That's why I'm counting the 10% minority holding. because I've, And if you've already counted 100%, you own only 60 or 50 or 75%, you've got to subtract out what doesn't belong to you. So use these four problems to think about the variety of problems and then Play some games. Ask yourself, what if I'd been you'd been given just the parent in problem four? What if the value that I'd given had been just the parent company, not the consolidator? How would the answer have been different? Work it through. Get comfortable with dealing with, with cross earnings because as I said it's messy, it's tricky, it's easy to get tripped up. So get comfortable with all the different variants. And if you do, you shouldn't get into too much trouble. That's about it. Thank you.